everyone, this is Vivi. Uh, so obviously I'm in a house right now. I just moved just a little one week. Um, and this is Marco. He's sunbathing. <laughs> this is his favorite spot in the house during the day now because the sun comes from the window over there. Um, so I just want to share with you a little update about my living situation and um, how I have moved from my van into a house and how I come to know this place. Two weeks ago we got about like a foot of snow so I came up with a plan to survive in my van. I had to prepare for the storm like at least two days before the, uh, the, the storm and because the weather changes very quickly here in the Atlantic Canada uh, so I don't know exactly how much is going to snow like what the weather is going to be like um, up until the day before of the storm so I kind of navigate the weather and check like almost every couple hours because it does really change every couple hours here so that was like my first snowstorm in Halifax like the first significant snowstorm in Halifax and when I was in my van um, so my plan was that I was going to drive to a truck stop in um, like a place that I would have shower and water so all the necessities that I need would be food, water, shower, and propane. I just fill up my propane tank um, all the way full. So if I need a lot of heat, I could still use it uh, for like at least a week. I know that for 20 pound tank, I can use up to 10 days. Uh, a week or 10 days depend whether I use it on high or on low um, and so I made sure my my propane tank is full I had to make sure my water tank is full um, because with water I have to refill every three or four days so if I'm going to get stuck at somewhere for one week say if uh, the road is bad and I won't be able to drive for several days up to a week then I would need to go to a place that have water so I can refill my water tank um, and especially when it gets really cold it can freeze my water tank so I also need to stock like uh, water jugs inside my vein as well so I have five water jugs that I keep inside the vein so it doesn't get freeze so at least I have five gallons <laughs> to use <laughs> like drinking water and doing the dishes and cooking and everything so that would just be enough for one day uh, with five gallons of uh, water jugs and shower I, I I don't think I can stand uh, not cleaning myself for like a week so I would need a place to get shower uh, at least every two or three days and if I have to get stuck somewhere without uh, not being able to drive anywhere for like a week I would have to stay somewhere close to a shower um, so food I would be able to stock my fridge up to a week and because I eat six days instead of seven days uh, because I fast one day a week so I can my fridge is big enough for me to stock uh, up to one week of food and because I eat only two times a day and six days in a week so that was enough food for me um, because I didn't know if like how the weather would be uh, within a week and if it's going to snow a lot or if it's going to uh, get warm up and melt on the snow so the weather is very unpredictable here 
so I had to prepare for the worst case scenario <laughs> So after I stock all my food, water, propane, um, and uh, and get my shower done, also I I go get my shower just the day before the storm. And then I decided to go and park at the drug stop, and it's a very nice drug stop. Um, if you are in the Atlantic area. Um, you can check out the big stop, truck stop. I think that's it's called big stop. <laughs> so this is a very well known place for us van lifers um, that travel around Nova Scotia. Most everyone know about big stop uh, because they have very nice truck stop, and I feel safe there. Before I go, I also call them like whether it's possible to park overnight because they open 24 hours so they don't have any issue with that so because it's open 24 hours even during the storm so in any case of emergency i have um, some kind of access uh public city um public access to um washroom shower or even call 911 or whatever um, because there, there's someone around like I'm not stranded in like remote area I don't think it's a good idea <laughs> to go somewhere very remote uh, to survive a winter storm so I decided to go to the truck stop um, and they have really nice shower there like you have to pay for the shower <laughs> it's not free but it's really worth it and I wouldn't mind uh, paying for the shower app because they let me park there uh, for uh, overnight and I ended up parking there for three nights. So the storm was on Friday night. No, the storm was on Friday morning. So I made sure that I got there on Thursday night and I parked there on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. <laughs> So I ended up parking for like three nights. So the first night it was relatively quiet and on the second night it was really noisy because it was snowing um, up until like 3 a.m. The snow mowing was like running all over the place cleaning the parking lot. Um, and it was getting really cold so everything got freeze uh, the next day on Saturday but at least I have a washroom I have shower I have water just in case I need it but I didn't stay at least I didn't stay for like a whole week I stayed there for only three nights and then um, the road was pretty decent on Sunday so I was able to drive on Sunday to go somewhere else and it get really warm couple days after. I was able to survive <laughs> in my van and the, the snow day, um, I think I was really chill after that. Like I felt safe staying there um, because it's, the area is well lit and they also have a restaurant there by the way. So they have uh, Burger King. Tim Horton and um, like a fast food restaurants like right by the gas station so in any case um, if I run out of food I would have food there it's not really nice food healthy food but at least there's something I'm I would not go starved <laughs> if I get stuck and I won't be able to drive for more than a week um, so that's the kind of area that I would go to to survive during the winter storm and the whole experience it wasn't it wasn't that bad like I felt pretty calm and uh, it, it, the only downside was that there was um, a nice place to walk Marco like I could only walk him uh, just around that square center and it's 
not that big and there's just too many vehicles it's not like a grassy and greens area like to walk Marco um, and it's right by the highway so we obviously can not walk him on the street like yeah so and it was a little noisy on the second night at night because there was cleaning the road and the parking lot but um, the first night and the third night when I was there, it was relatively quiet at night and it wasn't that busy. So it wasn't a really bad place to sleep overnight. And um, because I got everything prepared, so on my snow day, I felt pretty chill. Kind of just, and it's pretty warm in my van because I got all my propanes. Uh, the one power tank and the 20 power tank I run two of my propane heaters so it was fairly warm in my vein and um, it was at least not too uncomfortable I think it was a little cozy it, it wasn't like too uncomfortable to be in my vein uh, during that winter storm and because I didn't drive for three days so I also made sure to run my engine uh, to keep the batteries going so that it doesn't drain the coal doesn't drain the batteries all the way and yeah so i survived uh the winter some three days just fine and everything was good i didn't get stuck i had a really nice shower and they actually somehow give me a discount on the shower <laughs> I don't know how that, that that was the first time ever that I go to the drugstore and they kind of have a way to check me out at a discounted rate yeah it was it was a good experience there and um, I didn't have any trouble except that my inverter broke because uh, one of the fuse broke and I couldn't charge my phone at least I have the jugs out there and they have a lounge area for the jokers. Uh, so you can go and hang out at the lounge and I just went in there and um, use the outlet there and charge my phone. And luckily that happened only on the last day. Everything was fine. I was on the last day I was able to go to Canadian Tire to get like a new inverter. So yeah, the whole experience was it wasn't that bad and I thought I was able to survive it just fine I was able to cook I was able to get warm I was able to get shower and um, I didn't use all my water in my water tank um, and it didn't freeze my water tank didn't freeze but I didn't cook as much I also managed to fit in my fasting schedule during the storm as well so I could avoid cooking two times um, in a day so that I didn't have to use so much water um, and in case of my if my water tank was going to get freeze so I kind of have to like schedule and plan all these things out in order to survive uh, the winter storm and everything worked out just fine that was actually the first significant winter storm that we have in Nova Scotia so I was thinking maybe it's gonna get worse from here on and I was correct because tomorrow is going to be really freezing cold I was able to survive in my van up to minus 11 celsius but tomorrow is gonna be like minus 26 and then the day after it's gonna go down to like minus 18 I don't think I can survive that <laughs> in my way uh, so but two weeks ago I didn't know that so I decided okay I need to find a place to stay now and just when I set a solid intention um, I found a place, I found two places actually like the first time that I saw this place um, I messaged a lady on uh, on Facebook and she said contact her daughter and 
her daughter was going to school here in uh, I think she going to school in, in like about an hour away from here so um, she stayed at home and she said like in the weekend she would be able to show me like come here and um, do a video call with me to show me a little bit about the place and so when I saw the place, I was like, it's actually pretty nice on the phone. So I decided that I'm going to come and check it out um, on Wednesday, um, Wednesday last week. So I told her that because the storm was going to be on Thursday. So if I see that the place is nice enough then um, everything is exactly as what she showed me on the phone then I would just move in and because the place is ready and it's, everything is fully furnished so it's literally ready for me to move in like immediately so I came and I checked out the place and everything looks like what she said I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that this way actually exists uh, I want to make sure like, to come to this address and I check it out and then everything is good then I'll move into uh, the house and so um, it wasn't a scam or anything because the price was actually a really really good price it's actually kind of lower than my budget and everything is included so I think it's a little too good to be true and even my room is furnished as well and the kitchen is pretty huge I feel like I actually have um, I needed to have some adjustment I'm not organizing everything yet because <laughs> this kitchen is so big I have a hard time adjusting and this is Marco because I'm so used to my van I just stand at one spot and then I got like this here and this here and this here and everything everything is within my arm reach <laughs> but in this kitchen I have to think where did I put this where did I put that and I have to walk around to get my stuff um, so <laughs> it's, it's kind of distorted my orientation a little bit it took me several days to get adjusted and this is the living room of space for Marco to run around uh, so he's very happy with that Marco is happy to have space that I can play with him. He has toys. I got him some toys. How I came to know this place is quite interesting as well because um, they listed they they listed this place on Facebook uh, Marketplace, and so when I search on the marketplace, I was able to see it on the first time. So I messaged um, the, the owner of this house and she told me to contact her daughter and so I did and after that um, I didn't see the listing on Facebook anymore like it didn't come up on the search it was still available but for some reason it wasn't showing up on the search like if you like if I go to like Facebook marketplace to see like all the available um, rental units this place doesn't show up after I messaged this lady and she didn't message me for several days because she was sick um, but I was thinking like during that time I was thinking well maybe the place is not available anymore because it looks pretty nice um, and it's really affordable so I thought well maybe I lost it uh, because I couldn't find it in marketplace anymore but then when I go back to um, my message with uh, with the, the land lady um, I was able to see the listing 
only through my message with her and when I click on to see the details of the listing it still shows that this place is available but it's just not showing up on the search I don't know how is that possible <laughs> so basically I think that no one sees this place except me <laughs> or at least maybe other people see this place before me and after I message her it wasn't showing up on the search so that was really strange so I think it was really meant to be that I meant to come here and stay here uh, because when I talked to her daughter on the phone I kind of have feeling this is this is the place for me um, that, that I I would be able to stay here and it's the only place that is dog friendly because they used to have two dogs here um, they used to live here with their dogs and so they don't mind having a dog uh, coming to place here or coming to stay here this place ended up to be the only option for me and it ended up to be the nicest option for me but if I was going to accept the um, two other places um, that I found in Halifax in December I wouldn't be able to find this place yeah so you see how it ended up working out like the other two places rejected me in December and early January and I'm glad that they rejected me because now I found this place that's so much more um, convenient for me and Marco because there's no other pass around if I was going to stay at the first place that I found in Halifax and she was going to accept it, me and then I would have to stay with two cats and a dog and it, and it would be a little chaotic and her um, her son come visit occasionally as well so that would be like too many people um, so and not just that what I another thing that I really like about it is there's a trail that in the backyard so um, it's hard to see now because of the snow but there's a trail on the left side uh, I think it's an ATV trail so there's a trail right by the house that's like two thumbs up for me so I was really happy with that there's a lot of nature around as well in this area and it's so remote there's no neighbors around the neighbors are pretty far so Marco can bark his heart out bark as much as he wants and he's not going to bother anyone <laughs> and I also want to show you how I'm able to maintain uh, my batteries to survive the, during the winter uh, so let me show you that I think this would be a nice tip for all the van travelers out there if you have um, access to an outlet it would be a good idea to charge the batteries uh, fully at least once in the winter just to keep it healthy um, if you're not driving so much so whenever the temperature drops uh, I make sure that I charge my batteries before uh, before that and also after uh, when it gets super cold um, so let me show you that real quick so this is how I keep my batteries alive the engine batteries and also the AGM house batteries as well so there's an outdoor outlet that I can use but this one is probably about 50 feet this one 25 feet that one is 20 feet yeah so uh, this is what I used for the last three years to charge my batteries and it works pretty well actually so right now my battery is about 80% sorry right now my battery 
my battery is about 80% and I have been charging it for probably about 2 hours now um, so yeah I think I got this on Amazon for only like I can't remember the price maybe 40 60 dollars or something it's not really expensive but um, I have to pay for two cables um, I think so that is about $40 for two cables at Walmart um, but I think it's worth it to get the batteries um, alive and I also do the same thing with my AGM batteries in here so I just move everything out already my van is empty now but this year because I don't have anyone to help me to bring these batteries in because they're super heavy and I'm not able to do it by myself so there's another battery here under my bed So I have two AGM batteries and they both are about, um, I think one is 100 amp and the other one is 110, so 200, but I just measured them earlier. So they both are full now, uh, 14 volt, so that is pretty good. But I think after tomorrow, I'm actually going to charge them again and the cables, they both are long enough for me to hook up and charge um, and charge all of these batteries in my van so that's how I was able to keep my battery alive and healthy for the winter time um, the last two years I took those two batteries inside but this year um, I have to keep them outside but I look up online and it says that AGM batteries are uh, durable during the cold um, that it's not going to drain so much as long as you don't use it and you just um, unplug everything um, not hook up everything Oops. not hook up everything to the batteries and then it will be able to survive through the winter but I would have to make sure that the, the batteries is fully charged so yeah, um, as long as I have power in the house, I can charge my batteries with no problem. And as long as uh, they are full and maintained, then I'll be able to <laughs> drive whenever I, I need to. And there won't be any issue with, uh, with the batteries, hopefully. So it's actually a pretty big road right in front of the house there but it's fairly quiet at night it's really quiet at night here like there's no neighbor around like the neighbor is quite far away they're not like right next door so it's very quiet here and I like the fact that I can park my van um, right by the house and I'm able to check on the van and charge the batteries and maintain the batteries to make sure that everything is okay in the van as well so let's go back inside it's so cold <laughs> and they're cute little Marco Marco is pretty happy to be in the house so now he doesn't really go for a drive with me in the van <laughs> This guy, he, he doesn't like adventure as much as I do. So, I find this place to be really cozy. And this is my favorite. Uh, the dining area is my favorite because I love all the decor in here. It feels very nice and cozy, like a little cottage. Yeah, I think I'm extremely lucky. I think I'm very, very lucky to find such a decent place to stay for the winter time and I think it's really meant to be as well like why I'm the only one that respond to to this uh, to this place and I'm the only one to stay here so far so 
that's it for my update about my living situation um, I'm gonna go shopping with Marco now we're gonna need to go stock the food and all my need for maybe for two weeks this fridge is big enough for two weeks <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go stocking all the food so I don't have to drive at all <laughs> for the winter <laughs> maybe i don't have to drive for a whole week if i can avoid driving in the snow i would do that for as long as i can because i really don't like driving in the winter time i hate it so much anyhow i just want to share the last thing i want to share with you is that manifestation really works and i realized that as soon as I make a decision and I'm not gonna like go up and down with the weather whether I should stay in my van or I should like rent a place um, because before before that I was like maybe I should stay in the van this winter because the weather was good but when after the storm the, the first winter storm I was like okay that's it I'm gonna need to move into a house now or an apartment now and just as soon as I make the decision I was able to move um, find a place and move within a week it's that fast and this place is so nice I think it's a little my manifestation was a little better than i thought or maybe it's a little too too good to be true i don't know like would there be any problems coming up i'm not sure but at least right now i kind of really enjoy this place um and so i would encourage you to apply the tips and manifest something for yourself whatever that you desire because it, it does actually really work and for me i knew what get me stuck from the manifestation is because i wasn't sure whether i wanted to go uh, find a place or i stay in my vein and it took like a winter storm for me to <laughs> be sure that okay that's enough enough wandering around in my van i have to find a place i need to take it seriously so yeah that was the only holdback for me and as soon as i was able to make decision and be solid with my intention which is the fire energy then i was able to find a place and so um if if we know what's holding our back, uh, what is the block in our manifestation, and just remove that, then um, it'd be easier for you to manifest anything into your reality. And of course, if you want something a lot bigger, then it would require a lot more energy and effort. Um, my manifestation is fairly small, so it's not like anything like too crazy, like too big. So. Um, for me, um, another uh, valuable tip is because I wasn't anxious or I wasn't afraid, I wasn't scared. Um, if I was not able to find a place. So that's how I was able to keep my intention um, pure and solid. and there wasn't any fear behind my intention that i had to have to find uh, a place because i was thinking if i don't find a place it would be okay i would have uh, i would come up with another solution like i could go to a hotel or something and we're not gonna be strangers or anything so because i wasn't afraid i didn't have like i i didn't inject that fearful energy into my manifestation so this comes really fast like i was calm the whole like winter storm um i wasn't anxious or anything uh, so make sure that you also keep that in mind not to let any fear influence your manifestation 
um, that way it will come faster and easier as well and of course if you want to manifest something really big and something really significant it requires a lot more effort a lot more energy and time and um, a lot more effort to clear that fearful energy any anxiety anything that may be block um, the manifestation as well so that's my little tip I want to share with you and um, until the next video I'll see you then I still have another video that I'm working on and this one is taking so much longer because it's a really really big video for me uh, so until the next video stay warm and I will see you later Hey guys, did you check out my book yet? It's now available on Amazon and Lulu. You can also find out more information on my website livingthroughalchemy.com And if you enjoyed the book, please leave me a review. Thank you so much. Bye.